Oh, it's a gorgeous day out. And I'm going down to see Bob. And um, he's acquired a 572, which is supposed to be the replacement for the 576 and the 372 over time. Those two saws were very, very good. And, uh, the 372 original edition is probably one of the most significant chainsaws ever, especially for the professional world. Hey. <laughs> month the rate we're going is to be midsummer that road is probably got six eight foot of snow in it it's like you've been you've been busy yeah well some of these i put down some of these the, the nor'easter put down a couple weeks ago so we got plenty to play with here but the star of the show see we'll come over to the uh to the stuff over here I can't believe the difference in climate. It was 22 last night, it's supposed to get out of 12 tonight, so. Um, all right, here it is. 572 XP. Don't hit it with that thing. Halfway, no. <laughs> Halfway through its uh, second tank. And it's starting to finally wake up. It's like the prototypes, it was just not, you know. I mean, I tested it. I ran a tank through yesterday when I got home. And I, uh, I had a 24 inch bar on it. I just kept burying it in a 28 inch piece of ash and just burned up the tank of gas. So it was, it was a dirty frozen log. You know, like any of these new swords, it's kind of a uh, wild factor right there. Yeah, I mean, she's starting to come on now. But I remember the prototypes didn't take quite a while to make it. Ash is tough. It's so dry. Sucks up a lot of oil. Yeah. Yes, it does. Look at that. Cut cover. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff. When we get back to the store, we start taking it apart. There's a couple of interesting things here. Yeah. That uh, we can look over. Sort of the maiden voyage for this 572. And working on all these dead ash trees. What time is it anyway? About two? Yeah. All right. So I came out here. About 12.30. We can lay these two, these two over right into the yard. Bang. Both of them. They just go straight over. And Have I think, to yeah, wedge that one. Huh? Wedge that one. Yeah. Yeah, I had to wedge one. One of those big thing you see sticking up there. But there's a whole bunch of stuff. I mean, some of them broke off halfway up, as you see. Yeah. Yeah, this is a... This is a Playground. Mess. Yeah, this is awesome. Well, we got plenty to do.
bullseye. Yeah. And it busted it right in half.
what have we here? Well, we have Happy St. Patrick's Day. Yes. Oh. That's right. Here's to all our fellow members that are outside there watching us on video. <laughs> We've got some chainsaws here. And one of them came from a place not too far away from where they sound like this. Um, yeah, it's time to go home and watch uh, Waken Ned Divine again. Huh. Some old Barry Fitzgerald movie. All right, so I don't know which order this is going to be in, but we just spent uh, four hours out in the woods today working our old, our old bones pretty good, uh, dropping some trees and cutting up some firewoods. A lot of dead ash. And uh, so today was the debut of the 572 XP, which we have an example here. Um, this was uh, this was a dealer to dealer thing. It's the only one I got. Um, I'm not getting any more. Um, this was a, another dealer that was gracious enough to let me have one as a dealer. Yeah, you know, dealer cost, which is what dealers normally do, because um, I couldn't wait till freaking August. <laughs> You know, we had we had prototypes back in November 2011, and that's I mean this it was it's going to be worth the wait because a lot of the details that we're going to talk about here are worth waiting for. Um, but you know, it's like I was just like looking at it, said so I got to get one of these things. So I, think I have to bring that camera up close because there are some things on that saw that are different than anybody anybody who plays with the 562s are going to see immediately. Yep, and if you like the 562, you're going to love this. All right, uh, a couple of details. Um, you're gonna notice, or will have noticed, that the uh, and now it's only was, the temperature was in the mid 40s today, so it's not like we're in the middle of the summer. But this thing on the restarts, and I was deliberately stopping it and starting it a lot. It was like one pull. There was once or twice that it didn't start on the first pull. One, once after I uh, refilled it, because it had kind of run out. And then it was another time where I just it took like an extra pull. So that problem seems to be gone. One of, the, one of the ways they got rid of that, this is the top cover. And some of these guys have seen this, but, you know, nobody has uh, you know, described these changes with our flair and style that we do on the Fleet Command channel here. <laughs> so one of the things that was going on with the, uh, the 562, there was some hot start issues, so I was getting some of the heat out of here. And what would happen is you shut the thing off and the thing would still start shedding heat and you have no more cooling air because it's not running. So one of the things that they've done, it's simple. I mean, it's real simple. It's one of those, like, why didn't somebody think of this five years ago? But they thought of it now and it works. Is instead of having just the top cover like that, we have this insulating material, which is a heat shield. And, you know, the word is, now here again, it wasn't that hot today, but the word is that that hot start issue is kind of gone in this. Um, so there's a few other details. This is the, uh, the air filter. This air filter sealing base around here, this is, this is good too. This is a soft material and this thing gets down, it's a really good fit. And those fines that can get in there, and it wasn't on all of them, but sometimes you'd get, you know, a lot of fines on the inside of your air horn in there, which was not cool at all. So that's been eliminated. A couple of little things that they've done here. Um, on the intake side here, we're going to see, unlike the 562, um, these wires here, are there's a little plastic thing to hold them, and the wires come from the coil up to the auto-tune module or in the outside. Now, they're not tucked underneath the flywheel, so if you have, for whatever reason, you had to mess around with this, you didn't have to, you know, take the flywheel off. Some of what's going on here is because the whole frame is bigger, so they got a little more room to do things. And one of the things is nice, like your actual plug wire is right in this whole channel here, as opposed to being held in by, as you see on a 372 or 562, you know, a lot of times the plug wire is supported by your air conductor here, which stays in here. Now on the 572, the air conductor comes off with the starter. It's a separate part, you know, it can be changed. But, uh, you know, that's, that's how... You know, so sometimes if this stuff starts to break and guys run it with a busted because they get a piece of wood in there, you know, the, the air jet and the air conductor is really what supports this. If you lose that support, and some guys have probably say, yeah, I've seen that happen before, it sucks the wire in, it blows up your starter pulley, the, the rope, and everything else, and basically your, your uh, whole starter mechanism can grenade. That won't happen with this. Now, this isn't new. 
because this was also something that was done on the 576. It didn't go all the way across. The 576, it went like about halfway and then the plug wire just jumped up there. So that's not like totally new. It's one of those ideas that they've had around for a while. As opposed to one of our all-time favorite saws, the 372. This is the right side of the case on a 372. And how many guys have seen that thing get kind of busted? Because it's just this one bridge piece here. This is like way, 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 way different here. There's a lot more material there. Of course, you know, most of the guys that can, can bust up a 372 can bust this up or anything else that's ever been built by a chainsaw company. But uh, that's got to take a little more. It'll, it'll uh, absorb a little more impact there. Um, let's see, what else were you talking about that you liked? Well, there's a couple things I saw right off the bat. Obviously, the wires, like you pointed out, but the location of the port for the common service tool is right up here on top. Another yeah, you don't one have to turn the wires to get them in there. Another one that's kind of subtle is look how much space there is underneath that muffler as compared to the other ones. And there's a reinforcement plate on the outside of the muffler. So it because when it gets it banged, it's not going to cave in as earlier as, as easily as uh, it might have in the past. It has some 576 like things like this for the motion limiting. Yeah, the limiter, the movement limiter thing is pretty good right there. The uh, the other thing is this uh, air deflector on the muffler, this comes out a little bit more so it captures a little better cooling air. But there's another one that's really, really important to me. And check out how the plug wire is relative to the fins, even as compared to a 562. You know what else is a cute little thing here that they did? You notice this? Yeah. These two little things here to pull off your plug wire, it's a little easier. You got something to grip onto. You can you see it a little bit better at that angle. Yeah. I mean, this is simple stuff, but it's like, ah, oh, that's nice. You know, all these little nice touches. Yeah, it's not going to make the soil run any better, but if you got to live with it, it's uh, some little extra stuff that's nice. All of this, uh, all the silver paint, whether it's on the side cover or on the crankcase, they, they come out with this, it's kind of like a crinkle finish. It's actually pretty cool. There's one other huge, huge thing about this saw that makes it so much easier to live with. What? <laughs> Look at that. He goes, what the heck are you talking about? Oh, well, here's a clue. Chain breaks in there. It's not in the cover. Oh, for all those people that take it off and they force it off and they, uh, they can't. Yeah, and that's why we make special tools like that. For these people come out, hey, I won't go on, I won't go on. There's something wrong. Yeah, it's, uh, it's called operator error. And they take the thing off. See here again, like you were saying, you know, you can take this off with the chain break and gauge, which you really couldn't in the past. Look at that thing. See it? Yeah, the inboard <laughs> clutch that everybody's been wanting for some of the guys that's real, real important. It's got the inboard clutch. You also got, you know, for guys that only own one tool, you know, all the, uh, the hardware is all T27. So that's kind of like the technical overview. Uh, a couple things that, you now this saw came from, uh, from Europe, and it's got, the, uh, it's got the European tags on there, not the U.S. tags. It's just a different country code. The, I'm surprised you didn't notice this yet, but, you know, there, it didn't come with a side with the outside uh, buck and spike. It's, uh, it's, it's cast for it. That's because I always take mine off. Um, <laughs> you know, like, like a 555. Yeah. Now, this here again, I'm, I'm like, I would almost guarantee that when these things come into the country, that this it's going to be on there. Because the guys around here are going to want the, you know, the inside and the outside dogs. Yeah. Um, but, you know, <clears throat> where this thing came from, which is a market where I think they usually have uh, smaller saws, it's more of a 60 and 50 cc market than a 70 cc market. Okay, so what, what else do we want to talk about here? Other than the fact that, let's talk about how it ran. Ran good. One how, more thing. What, what do we think about it? I like it. But here, you still have the adjustable oil pump, and look how easy it is to get to. A couple other little things, uh, little details since you turned it over. Is this uh, that way? Um, <laughs> this is appropriate. You know, the, the bottom screws here, it's like on a 395, they don't go into plastic. All right, this, this, this extra one here is for like the wrap handle um, when that's available. 
but um, but there's like metal, you know, the same thing. There's like a metal thing here on both both of these two. So these two are not the same as the side screws. Oh no kidding! Yeah, these go into metal. Oh, you can see it from the back. Yep. I wonder if I can get the camera around to show that. Yeah, probably. Right in there, you can see it. Maybe you can't. So anyway, so how she runs? Let's get back on on track. Here. So how she run? It, you know, I, I ran a tank through it. It's, it's got about three tanks through it now, which is I'm keeping score. Now that we got three tanks through it, she's starting to wake up, and it's it's nice and it's really smooth. No vibration. And we could do. We're gonna at some point probably will do a whole video just on vibration, but um, it's the power is starting to get really nice, which was yeah, you know, like anything. You get first, you're, I got, you're all this anticipation. And it's like, oh, I'm not bragging about this thing yet. But I remember from the prototypes that we had, the prototypes took a long time. You know, they, they took five to ten tanks before they really started to you know, get the wow factor. You ran it back to back with uh, an XPW, right? Yeah. Uh, you, you could hardly tell the difference in power, if there is any difference. And I would attribute, we disagreed on that just a little bit, but I would attribute some of that to the way I sharpen a chain. <laughs> 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 yeah, well, the video wouldn't be complete without arguing about it. Shot That's it. The key point here is that this is not broken in. Right. Well, it and, still makes good power. And when I had, you know, we had those prototypes. You ran the prototypes, too, yeah. that day, when they were brand new. Yeah. And they're okay, you know. And when they came back after really being broken in, it was a whole different saw. Well, I think you're being so, too hard on it. Well, I'm not being hard. I'm just saying that it's like my expectations were that, you know what, you know what you're, when you detected, like, you know, my kind of being annoyed with it, it's because I hate having to break in a saw. Oh, because I they got to run like 10 tanks through it. And I was like, you know what, I got to, you know, I, I went home last night and I just like wasted a tank of gas cutting cookies on that 28 inch log just to kind of get it to wake up. And uh, it's, it's, like I said, it's coming on now. And I was like, all right, this is fun now. That's the uh, standard BPM R7A plug. That's good. That, that's, uh, you know, you don't get that real little mini plug. Um, and the reason you can get, the reason the mini plugs came into being was it had to do with the, Amer the area on the top of the combustion chamber. Well, now we got to a bigger cylinder, so that's not necessary. Obviously, the design architecture here is within the family that yeah. was already established with the 62s. That might be the same part. The choke, yeah, the choke lever there on the spring. The throttle cable, I would guess it's got to be longer. You know what's the same? Flippy caps. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. They're uh, the uncomplicated flippy cap. Which can go all the way back to a 55. You could put that on a 2100. Now, I've been saving this because this is the thing that's going to be most important to you. And this is a picture. You're going to have to figure out how to get this on the camera. Um, but this is a picture of um, the oh, 372 the style size bearing, which is being held in the, in, by hand there. Okay, you got a good shot of that? Yes. Okay, the, the bearing, the smaller bearing that's being held in, in hand is the older, the, the 372 size bearing. The bearing that's in the 572 is the one that's on that crankshaft. That's a 572 crank. And that's, uh, you know, it's, it's not an interchangeable part because it's got the integral seal to it, but that's like a 288 size bearing. So this is a really strong bottom end, very strong bottom end. Now that adds weight, I mean, but the fact is, I think most people uh, would rather have the reliability than lose a half a pound, you know. It's interesting because it seems to go in cycles where some designs focus strictly on weight and brag about weight, and others brag about reliability enhancements. And this one here, from the crank all the way up to the heat shields, has been about refining a design and, and getting the reliability to the point where it's undisputable. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure about this, but I'm, I believe that that upsizing of the bearing was done since the initial prototypes that I had. Yeah. Yeah, you know, they just felt that this thing was putting out a little too much power for that for that size bearing. It makes good power. Uh, it makes the same kind of power as that XPW does, just a little bit different RPM range, but it vibrates less. There's very little vibration, and if, and if this thing picks up as much power as the prototypes did, it's it's going to be a whole different game.
Right, which I expect it will. Very cool saw. Now there's a actually there's a logger that he's one of the guys that tested the uh, prototypes and he's going to take this because I don't you know I don't I'm not really going to have a chance to put another ten tanks through it without just wasting a whole bunch of the firewood pile. So I'm going to give it to Frank and Frank's going to break it in for me. But he can't break anything on it because you, none of these parts are available yet here in the U.S. So you now, can't say, break, oh, I need a brake handle for... Did he break the first 562? Was he the one who dropped that one? No, no, that was another guy. That was the guy named Lee. Yeah, it, it, it failed the 60-foot the gravity test. <laughs> we ran it, though. Yeah, we actually ran it after we broke. It still, you know, still ran okay. That was actually a 560. It was a 560? That was a 560 with that... Ugly, great top. Hey, can we plug this into Common Service Tool and see if there's any new little widgets? Yeah, we can. By the way, this is an aside, but this is the bar that Bob ran on that saw today. This is the chain. And we were cutting ash, and it was very dry. It was... <laughs> it's dead. Yeah. <laughs> How many times did you have to adjust that chain? Oh, actually, yeah, I didn't adjust it at all. There's two tanks of fuel on that without having to tighten it. Yeah. And if anything sucks up oil, you know, bar oil is going to be that kind of ash. Okay. Show them how easy that was, because that, that's huge. Yeah, you know, for guys that got to work on these things, you know, this, this uh, access plug here. Right on top of the carb. Yeah. It's easy to get at, not tucked in there, even though they got more room. And if you see, there's there's actually room to put that in there. I like so, it. So I suspect on a G that, that that might be where it goes, because G right here, on a G model, you're going to have like the carburetor heater right there. I see. So it could be a couple different things. Well, it doesn't, well, we got an hour and a half on it. We started at 27 times, it's running at 13.5. Okay. And our carburetor, that's a weird setting right there. I think that's because it was running out of fuel. Either that or it was just idling too long. So, let's see. No error codes, of course. Is, is there a firmware update or not? John? <laughs> I got Red Max in here now. <laughs> All right. Oh, we're going to have to check the coil number. But it can only be one coil because these things just came out. All right. You know what? This actually is going to take an update. Because okay. it would have already said your product is up to date. So let's do an update. Okay, firmware update succeeded. All right now it's going to go reconnect. Let's like, see. Go back to operating history. Let's, you know what? No, watch these numbers on your fuel settings. And let's just see. I'm going to do a, a reset on the fuel settings. Here, let me get in close on it. All right, we'll just see, just for hell of it, see if they're going to change. Hang on. Because 35 looks like a low number, but then when you run these things out of gas, you know, the low setting is going to get strange. Well, the low is 35. 35. The high is uh, 76. Now, if you, you know, some of these things, will, obviously, they'll, they'll reset themselves as you run them. But we don't know what's normal for that carburetor. Well, we're going to find out. Because we're going on a default reset on your fuel settings. Yep, they changed a lot. Wow, all the way up to 80. Yeah. Oh, this, yeah. You know, and that is low. I mean, a lot of times you'll see, like, on a 562, you'll see them, like, 120, 130, you know. So they've, they've got, so this, this whole idea that heat shield and keeping the heat out of the carburetor, it works. That's interesting. That is a, that is a biggie. Now I'm glad we plugged this thing in. Okay, we're kind of winding things down here. You know, the thing is, if we work in the woods enough, even our big mouths start to run out of gas. You guys that think you talk too much, and we do. No, there's no question that we do. Um, now, I'm just kind of curious here. Is that circlip and that washer the same as the 372? Absolutely. I don't have a big enough thing to do this, and uh, there we go. All right, we're going to wind it down. Anything else to say? Uh, no, it's a good day. You know what? We, we've been kind of winners made a return, an unwelcome return that we wish wasn't here. Um, but we had a good, another good day in the woods because we're jumping on them when we get the opportunity to get out there. So we had a good one in January, good one in February, good one in March here. You got a wedding next week, then it's Easter. So 
We'll see everybody in April. Yep. Stay tuned. Same bat time, same bat channel. <laughs> All, right. All right. Camera off.